Sorry, so it's going to take us. So, letting you all know that we did go live, but we're now going to wait for attendees to check everything. It looks like we've plateaued. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today um, for our public comment section for the new Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure Program. Um, a reminder that after today's session, uh, we're still going to be accepting public comments through August 11th. Um, you can email us at hdoa.rfsi at hawaii.gov. Um, uh, you, we're going to start with a short presentation and then we're going to go into um, our comments that we received through email submissions um, as of today. And then after that, we'll open it up to the public. Um, if you have any comments when it comes time, you would just raise your hand in the Zoom call and then we would let you um, speak. Uh, let me turn it over to Sharon. Hey, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, this session is recorded and will be posted on our Hawaii Department of Agriculture YouTube channel. Uh, the reason we're having this listening session is that the Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure Opportunity was, uh, it was very clear that the priorities that we should be focusing on as a state are the priorities that you come up with. We need your input as to what should be the priority for the different uh, programs that we will be funding. We do have $3.2 million, which was appropriated for this, this particular program. Not all of it's going to be used for the, the awards, but a majority of it will be. That said, let me introduce the people that are in the room with us right now. And that would be Matthew Loke, the Administrator, Agriculture Development Division. We have Dexter Kishida, the current Acting Plant Industry Administrator. Andrew Pomsavan, you've already met. He's the Office Assistant over at the Marketing Division. We also have Brendan Akamu, who has um, will be taking a little piece of the, uh, the program in, for the marketing piece. And we also have Stephen Dalton in here monitoring our system. So with the welcomes done, uh, we don't have much time with the listening session, so I'll turn it over to Megan for a quick uh, update on the purpose of the grant. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, Aloha Kako. My name is Megan Blazak. Some of you may recognize me from my work with the Kohala Center. And so today I'm here assisting HDOA uh, with their application to USDA for the Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure Program, also called RFSI for short. And this program focuses on the middle of the food supply chain. So what that means is processing, distribution, storage, transportation activities. Um, and it's What's great about this grant is it kind of funds all the things that we're not used to seeing USDA funds. So um, eligible projects will have to focus on the specialty crop sector, uh, dairy and aquaculture. Um, meat and poultry had a similar program dedicated to them. Uh, so they're not covered by this program, but there's lots of specialty crop growers on this call. So I'm sure you're interested. And um, el eligible activities are, items that you can fund through this grant. It's really infrastructure and equipment focused. So everything from modernizing a manufacturing operation, whether it's your building, your equipment, your technology, 
things that are going to make it easier and more efficient for you to comply with food safety laws, workforce training, uh, wastewater systems. I know wastewater is always difficult um, for our food processors uh, to handle and find funding for. So that's eligible. And even construction of new facilities, renovation of existing facilities, your cold storage, um, anything that improves energy efficiency, water efficiency, air quality. I mean, all the things that everyone wants funding for and can never seem to find, right? So it's a fantastic program conceptually. I think the last thing I wanted to share um, is the USDA really is prioritizing for underserved producers, uh, farmer cooperatives, and projects that benefit multiple producers. So, you know, if you think of a food hub, there's lots of growers that can market through a food hub, just as an example. Um, so trying to think collaboratively in ways that you can network with other folks who share your goals, that's going to make a stronger application. Um, there's also an emphasis on family farms, um, which we have many of in Hawaii. Most of our farms are family farms. So I think this is a great opportunity for our local ag uh, agriculture sector, something that all of us have really been wanting and AMS is delivering. So um, that's the context of this funding opportunity and some of the highlights for uh, kind of the box that we're trying to fit our projects into with this program. And that's all, I can hand it back to HDO. Okay, so we're going to do just two slides, folks, because this is a listening session. And uh, let's start the slideshow. Thank you, Stephen. This is what I just ran through verbally. So you can see at the top, um, the middle of the food supply chain focused on processing, aggregation, distribution. Um, this is a summary of what I just shared. So you can, you can progress the deck. And then si similar to what I just shared, the suggested uses of funds, really a focus on you know, built infrastructure. Um, and then this, again, this emphasis on, you know, local support for your project, underserved communities, cooperatives, um, family supporting uh, quality jobs. So really trying to create um, projects that are going to be long lasting. Okay, thank you, Megan. So we're going to move on to the questions that were submitted in it, not questions, but the priorities to consider that were submitted in advance. And we had you know, a good, good number, but please continue to submit it through that website, HDO, um, through that email, excuse me, hdoa.rvsi at hawaii.gov. So, Andrew? Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's begin with uh, a question on food production, um, specifically uh, new and beginning farmers. Um, this question, uh, this comment was submitted uh, by um, Go Farm and said, training new farmers, um, if food system resilience is the goal, this money should be used to help increase the number of viable small and medium scale farmers located throughout the state in strategic locations by providing them with basic practical infrastructure so they can do what they are trained to do, produce quality food for local consumption. Okay, okay. So the priority that we gleaned from this, uh, thank you for the submission from Jay, um, we, we would like to submit to the USDA as a priority to consider is to provide infrastructure for smaller scale aggregating and distribution operations that provide middle of the supply chain services, such as wash, aggregate, pack, refrigerate, distribute to small scale farmers. So that's one priority we're going to be submitting. Go ahead, Andrew. Okay, um, the following comment um, is also about um, training and says, if we could establish a force of young people interested in learning to farm and grow food, pair them with knowledgeable people or kukuna, that would be an obvious beginning. Then reach out and ask people that own larger tracts of land and homes on acres and properties and have them lease a minimum of a quarter or a half acre of land to go into the food production network. 
Yeah, I'll take this one. Uh, Creating is part of the uh, allowable uh, priorities that this grant program can fund. So we will definitely look into that, uh, but the focus will be more beyond production to include um, processing and education and distribution. Thank you. Okay, this um, particular comment we want to re we want to advise the submitter Chivo that you can this is very well suited to the micro grants for food security program. So you would consider submitting something like this uh, for that program. The priority that we glean from this one would be to provide infrastructure for on farm post harvest processing, preservation and storage, which are allowable activities under this program. So the difference is this is on farm. Okay, um, we also received a few comments from uh, master food preservers, um, and they consist of, one, uh, set up testing facility to provide more data and safety for tropical food preservation techniques and guidelines made publicly available. Uh, I see this facility as an important resource for the community overall, where a product maker or seller could potentially provide sample for testing. And two, provide access to more locally local community kitchens around the island where food products can safely be made with guidance for sale and for home consumption. Okay, we had a couple of priorities, suggestions coming from the canning food preserver sector. And they were very welcomed as this is exactly what the grant was uh, targeting the middle of this food supply chain. So the priority that we're going to be submitting is to provide technical services and infrastructure for food preservation, canning operations such as testing, GMP, HACCP, guidance, nutrition, nutrition and or label content for home consumption or commercial sale. So we have three priorities so far. Andrew? Okay. Um, our next one uh, in general is to prioritize the funding of organic food production. Okay. Can I take this? Um, well, okay, you, you want me to? Okay. So this one was for food production, which is unallowable under this grant. This grant is for the middle of the supply chain, off the farm from that point on to consumer consumption. So we're recommending that this grant for organic food production, while it is a very good idea and very necessary, is more suited for a micro grant for food security program type of uh, opportunity. Again, this grant is not for production. It is for processing post-harvest. Okay. Okay. Um, our next comment uh, is, it would be helpful to have a hub, simply put a list of groups, free store addresses, tool libraries, UHC chart websites and studies, hours for urban garden center, plant sales, uh, just a place where people can find help. It would be great if people had the option of putting their info out there with the other recipients to learn from each other. But altogether, um, the most helpful thing I think would be to establish recipients with farmers who are already successful. Okay. This priority, me? Okay. This priority is for establishing a middle of the supply chain blog monitored by paid staff to respond to farmers and ranchers in rural and underserved areas and includes in-person visits. So this would support the middle of the supply chain producers with a network of, of information that they can share, help each other. Do you have anything to add to that one maybe? Um, I guess the focus on um, location in rural areas is a priority. Because uh, the USDA does want um, agriculture development to take place in rural areas, and uh, they do want to uh, increase um, processing and opportunities for expansion of agricultural food products in those areas. Okay, um, that concludes the comments that we received so far. Uh, once again, 
Uh, we are still taking comments in up until the August 11th date uh, submitted to HDOI, uh, hdoa.rfsi at hoi.gov. And now we're going to open for public testimony live. For the listening session. For the listening session. And um, if you have some comments, uh, you can raise your hand in the Zoom call. Andrew, can you share how you raise your hand? I, oh. I, I can Proceed. I can chime in. Um, so for any of you who are joining via the Zoom application, um, you can click the raise hand button and um, we'll we'll call you up and would ask you to then unmute yourself. Um, and um, I noticed there's at least one caller who's calling in by the phone. Um, and if you would like to uh, speak, you could click pound and then nine which will essentially raise your hand um, and let us know that you're interested to speak. Um, and then when we call you up, you'd hit pound six to unmute yourself. Um, I'll start going down the list, starting at the top. Um, I'll first call forward Nathan. Hi, Nathan. Can you- Hey, hey guys. Um... Yeah, hello, my name's uh, Nathan Trump with uh, Hawaii Macadamia Nut Association. Um, the macadamia nut industry um, <clears throat> has several challenges uh, on the processing side. Uh, a lot of our uh, infrastructure is uh, outdated um, and kind of falling apart. And so uh, we had a focus group put together in the last few months to kind of discuss um, how to move forward. And one of the... Um, a few things that we discussed was potentially constructing a new processing facility uh, as part of a cooperative or maybe as part of a different structure. Um, and then another uh, uh, priority was perhaps fixing up some of our current uh, processing facilities to make them more efficient um, and to allow uh, more processing capacity for Hawaii's macadamia nut growers. Um, macadamia nuts are one of the largest crops in the state. Uh, and uh, provide a lot of um, jobs and food for uh, the state of Hawaii, including small, medium, and large farms um, across the spectrum. Um, and so considering the macadamia nut industry um, and some of the other larger uh, commodities uh, would be uh, our comment on priorities. Thanks. Nathan, I think if you look down the... Uh... The different eligible uses you hit practically all of them so i hope you do submit a submission for the infrastructure grant remember that when the infrastructure grant comes from a rural underserved area your match is 25 percent you aware of that yes yes we're aware of that um depending on the group we're able to put together it might be 50 percent, might be a 25 percent match if we're awarded a grant yeah okay thank you thanks um, next, I'm going to call up uh, Negus Mana. Hello. Hello. We Hello. can hear you. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to submit testimony in support of this. Um, and thank you for uh, applying for this. Um, this is exactly what the state needs. Um, I'm the current president of the Lanai chapter of the Hawaii Farmers Union United. And um, I can testify that the Lanai commu rural community of family farmers is in definite need of infrastructure for developing value added products and processing um, livestock um, to so they could sell commercially to the market here on the island and countywide statewide. So um, I would like to just let you know that um, we are capable of administrating um, a program. Uh, this is new to me, so I didn't have time to prepare. So I'm sorry, I'm shooting, for, I'm talking off the top of my head. Um, <clears throat> but we are uh, in a position to administrate um, a program to uh, get that infrastructure developed, such as community kitchens, uh, uh, processing facilities for livestock animals like pigs, goats, sheep. Um, also, 
um, having processing of facilities so that we could uh, have canning, uh, canning equipment, uh, so we can develop uh, a line of value added products some farmers are looking at. But um, I just wanted to make sure that Lanai is recognized and not forgotten uh, during this opportunity. So thank you uh, for allowing me to uh, make sure Lanai has input on this. Thank you. Thank you, Negus. Great ideas. Just a reminder, though, that uh, livestock had uh, other grant opportunities. So this is focused on other parts of the industry. But otherwise, I think you reiterated a few of the proposed um, suggestions already. So, yeah. so I think totally on point for priorities. Thank you. Yeah, Ken, yeah I just, go ahead. I would just like, just because Lanai gets skipped over quite a bit. So I just want to make sure it's equitable for the whole state. Right. I know we have a lot of farmers in Maui and Oahu and other places, but we have a handful here and having um, an investment like this would make such an impact to speed along the progress for us to have the food security and nutrition security for the community's welfare. Thank you, Negus. But remember, the NI has to apply. OK, it's not that we, over, we, we will review all the proposals that come in. Um, and if they're if they stick to the rules, then I has a chance. To, the applications should be flowing in from Lanai. Tell all your HMU you members, let's all apply. And because you said you're new to this, Negus, um, there's the frequently asked questions that were in included in the email that was sent out. And please look at question number one. Question number one says you can ask for equipment anywhere from ten to one hundred thousand dollars. No match is required. So if, if you feel your farming community needs equipment, check out the frequently asked questions, check out number one, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the clarification. Um, and would, would one application from the union um, to support the family farmers that are members be appropriate or would you prefer individual farmers submitting applications? I don't think there's... Um... You could uh, do separate ones if you wish. Mm -hmm. uh, equipment, for example, has no match up to 100,000. And if you want to do uh, expansion of existing facilities, they may be a match. Uh, it could be 50% uh, or it could be 25% if you are serving a disadvantaged group of mm -hmm. farmers or ranchers. Would so, that match? Would guess, that we, match? Can't tell you, we can't tell you what to do. But we can tell you that your priorities are right on. And I'd like to call in Megan at not this point. Megan, is there a is there a rule as to how many applications an individual can submit? Megan did uh, leave the meeting a little bit ago. Okay. Uh, I don't see her as having joined the attendees. Okay. So Negus, um, Matthew's point is well taken. If you have a group of farmers, you can all apply for a different piece of equipment. Um, and then you can apply as the farmers union for a the construction of a processing facility. So it doesn't limit you to, you know, all your farmers getting together and having to do one application. That's not a rule. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I, I did want to ask. We we had a. A member of public that had their hand raised all the way up until just a moment ago, Saleh Azizi. Uh, did you still want to ask a question? If you did, you could raise your hand again. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Saleh Azizi, and I just didn't want to take up your valuable time because you had already mentioned that a lot of this will be used to support Hawaii's food hubs, but um, I work as the director of the Hawaii Food Hub Hui, and the Food Hub Hui is a practitioner-led network of 14 food hubs on all islands here in Hawaii, supporting about 1,400 farmers. And so just wanted to uh, really congratulate you and applaud you for going for this effort. Uh, we'll be working with um, um, Hawaii Good Food Alliance and the Regional Food Business Center to coordinate efforts with you. Um, and I just wanted to speak to the need in our community as 
you are well aware of having just administered the Food Hub pilot program. Um, but in my recent needs assessment with our 14 Food Hubs, there is about a need of $50 million to raise um, the middle of agriculture, those facilities that connect the dots between our producers and consumers. Um, and so the need is really great. I think the Food Hub pilot program was a wonderful initiative that started addressing this, uh, but it's great to see that there's more resources coming in. And of course, it's not all about the money and the resources. It's really about reaching those farmers so that that produce can make it to market. So um, just wanted to uh, um, say that and thank you for allowing me to give a comment. Thank you. Next, I'll call up Will and Nina. Will here, Will Wild and Nina Brooks. I wanna speak um, in high support of GoFarm. We both just finished the Ag Excel. It's a six month program and can't speak enough about it. It's an excellent program in terms of how much information is broadcast to the students. So that what they're continuing to do in terms of growing and adding <laughs> pack houses and cool bots would be a huge help. Um, so that's it, as well as anything CTAR is doing as well, because there is a very good connection between the CTAR agents and the GoFarm staff. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Heard. Uh, next, I'll bring up Una Greenaway. Hello. Hi, Sharon. Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, I just received this email a few days ago from the, uh, the Ag Alliance here on the Big Island and um, I, Food Alliance. Um, so this program is, oh, uh, as a, a woman farmer, I'm assuming that, so then I would need a 25% a uh, cost share on a, a grant to do something for my farm, like equipment, correct? Equipment has a special category. So you're partially correct. If you have a piece of equipment, minimum 10,000, maximum 100,000 for a piece of equipment, that that is no match at all. Oh. However, if you have a project that is to create like an organic, um, warehouse that includes processing, mm -hmm. packaging, refrigeration, that mm -hmm. particular total amount is going to require 25% match, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to know. Thanks. Oh, um, thank you. That looks like all the hands raised. Were there any other hands or any other members of the public that uh, wanted, to, wanted to speak? Um, we do, we have a, a Nicole Millman. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted, I had my hand raised earlier and then like Saleh was like, oh, I can just hold it. And then Nathan said what I was hoping he would say. Um, I think that there's an opportunity to reach out to the commodity associations, such as the Magnet Association, avocados, uh, kalo groups um, to find out if there are infrastructure needs that those commodity or those um, those crop groups have. And then what comes to mind is over the last, say, six to nine months, um, Kelly Timi and Teresa Young over at the Kohala Center have been doing a needs assessment of Hawaii's cooperatives, including some of the new co-ops that have been popping up over the last three months, and including a I believe there's an AVA cooperative um, forming, if not formed already on Hawaii Island. And I, so I think that there is also uh, value in reaching out to Kelly and Teresa to see about what they've uh, gleaned from those co-op members and those co-op boards. Um, as primarily those groups are coming together, together around middle of the supply chain um, infrastructure needs. So I just wanted to, um, to bring up those two things. And thanks you guys for going for this and holding this session. 
Yeah, so Nicole, I'm going to put it back on you. Maybe because we're looking for priorities here, would the priority be to reach, the priority would be to favor, not favor, um, prioritize commodity groups needs and, you know, we're looking for priorities here. So maybe ask Teresa if the priority would be to work with commodity groups to provide the infrastructure they need for the middle of the supply chain. Is that where we're going with this? I don't think it needs to be either or, but I think that it's an opportunity to, just like the Mackinac Association is looking at a potential, um, considering potential new infrastructure, that this could serve multiple farmers or multiple producers um, well that are working together right now within kind of groups around crops. Um, so I can follow up with Teresa and Kelly and ask them if any of their producers or co-ops that they're working with would be willing to submit public comment just around the needs that they specifically have or a group of farmers within their within their crop group. You call this Matt. Um, thank you for your suggestion. I think what we can do at our end is to send an invitation to the various commodity groups to uh, submit uh, their comments to us. And I think that um, in this particular grant, there is a priority for underserved farmers and uh, ranchers. And I guess uh, there's also an emphasis on distressed areas across the state. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure because our state plan hasn't been submitted yet. Nicole, but there might be additional points given for proposals that are submitted that hit the target on the priorities for this program. So that's the idea of coming up with the priorities from the, from the grassroots. So if the priority is to serve through the commodity groups, there might be additional points for commodity groups that actually submit because that's considered a grassroots priority. Kind of like that's where we're going with this listening session. Uh, thanks, you guys. I'll follow thanks. up with uh, Kelly and Teresa. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to call up Sarah Freeman. Hello, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Freeman. I am the Food Systems Specialist for the County of Hawaii. Um, my question is, how will applications work for Department of Ag facilities um, for farmers or cooperatives that are based in those or other government-based facilities that are interested in this opportunity. I don't think they're eligible. Um, Sarah, I think when it comes to equipment, uh, they would be eligible to apply for the equipment uh, grant as from 10,000 to 100,000 for the, for the duration of the project. But if there was like upgrades to a DOA facility where there's manufacturing, for say for the Ulu Co-op or if the or the Lalo Milo farm lots, uh, right, where there be uh, improvements to DOA facilities, how would that work? So the reason that you bring saying it's a state facility is because the Ulu Co-op is leasing land from us. Correct. Okay. I would say that the Ulu Co-op would be submitting an application from themselves for increased for equipment for their to improve their infrastructure, of course, because they're leasing from us. Your point is well taken. They have to get um, approval from our ag resource management people to make the changes, but they would be eligible. I would recommend that in this case, Donna and her group maybe submit to our ag resource management, the types of changes they want to make to the infrastructure and get an approval as that would probably strengthen her application. The committee might ask, you know, I wonder if the Department of Ag would approve this. So if she has that letter in there, then uh, we would have no question as we go through the review process. Is that the question, Sarah? Yeah, thank you. I wasn't yeah. meaning to call out the ULU Cup specifically, but I was just curious about DOA related mm -hmm. facilities and their ability to apply for this opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. Um, next, I'd like to call out Jermaine Bellina. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. 
Yeah. Aloha. This is Jermaine Bellino. I'm out in Maui. I'm consulting actually on a central Maui uh, food hub um, project. And it is a new project. And it's really amazing and great to see the work that you folks are doing. Um, this project is geared towards small family farmers. And um, so far, the projected budget is over 26 million for this project. Um, the capacity will be pretty significant for the island of Maui. And uh, it also includes uh, a component of sl a slaughterhouse facility. So um, one, it's wonderful, wonderful work that you folks are doing. We really appreciate that. Um, our team will be getting together to, to discuss this, this this uh, grant opportunity and submit some feedback to you. And uh, the other thing is, you know, we we would love to probably collaborate more on uh, additional funding opportunities. Um, I was hoping that Uncle Bobby Pahia would jump on the call, and I think he is trying to. So you'll hear much more from him too. But one thing I would, would like to add is in addition to the preferences, possibly one thing to consider would be um, uh, up and coming new capacity. Um, that would be really helpful. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jermaine. Mahalo. There's just one more, uh, there's Jerry. I'd like to call you forward. Hello, everyone. This is Jerry. I'm uh, calling from Kauai. And I must say, I have to applaud the department for securing this funding. Um, it's really critical, much needed at this stage. And I especially like the focus of this program, which is a small scale on farm um, uh, infrastructure. And oftentimes, the small farmers get lost in a shuffle. We're not good grant writers. Uh, we don't have staff to do that. And um, I know the needs are great, uh, food hubs great. Um, the bulk of the money could easily go to, to food hubs, but I'm hoping that um, we can decentralize some of these operations and do on-farm processing and, um, you know, and, and vertically integrate our operations. And again, I ask that the small farmers not get lost in a shuffle. Thank you. Okay, message well taken, Jerry, small farm priority. Yeah, and uh, processing is eligible, so please put in an application. Okay. Uh, we have another, we have Robert Bentz. Hi, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to echo the previous uh, speaker with the uh, focus on the smaller vertical integrated like uh, Go Farm was saying and to again thank you for this awesome grant um, opportunity for the small farmers for processing and I'm not sure if hemp counts as a uh, specialty crop because of the census issue I think it doesn't I uh, I know dairy is a good um, uh, focus because uh, Hawaii kind of used to have dairy like Haleakala dairy, but we lost our dairy, and uh, that would complement the organic market development grants because um, that also has the dairy as a focus and it also offers uh, equipment grants. Uh, mahalo! I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything. Have a great, great evening. Hey Robert, thanks. So yes, um, specialty crop does is, hemp is not a recognized specialty crop. But let me do this for you. We'll we'll send a message to uh, USDA and ask if your microgreens and the seeds, not seeds, um, the nuts that you you harvest from hemp, maybe those might be considered middle of the supply chain type of processing. Is yeah. Are you, yeah. Is that all you're going to do is hemp or is there something else? 
I was thinking to do the microgreens hemp. Um, I'm not sure if other hemp processing would be allowed because um, like you said, the microgreens might be the one that counts as a specialty crop. Um, yeah, that might be good to just check. I The federal law hopefully is going to change with allowing the hemp to be fed as a livestock feed. Um, that looks very promising for uh, dairy input to feed the um, cows to hemp, but um, dairy is a really good one for that processing one. Um, like you said, maybe the microgreens or doing other value-added um, supply processing um, materials could count, but Thank you. Hey, Robert, try to take a look at Q&A number one. Yeah. Maybe, exactly. yeah, maybe you'll just, just stick with the equipment that you might need and don't bring hemp into the picture. Right. That seems like the equipment grant is an awesome um, option um, for this grant and for the organic um, micro um, organic development as well. Yeah. Maybe give that, that particular path a try. I don't Thank think they're going to go for him, okay? That that makes sense. I saw that. Good. I grow a lot of other uh, specialty crops, so like a boy mill and stuff like that is also awesome. So equipment yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Robert, uh, dairy processing is eligible. It's eligible. It's awesome. So we're going to look for an application from you, okay, Robert? Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks like it. Okay, so what um, other people that walked in the room that want to be part of this uh, listening session, we have Carol Okada, acting deputy, and um, any comments from the group to help with the priority seeking? No? We did have one more member of public raise your hand. Is there a time? Or? No, 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 six o'clock. Okay. Um, I'd like to call up Ira Shima Bukuro. Um, hello. Uh, you referred to the Q&A, and I'm look, reviewing the email, and I don't see a link to the Q&A. Can you speak to that for me? Sure. Um, so the Q&A for this RFS I grant came out late, maybe a, maybe a week ago. Um, and there's uh, quite a few questions. So what I'll do, Iris, is I will send it to you. Awesome. It might be on the it might be on the website, but it does answer a lot of questions about the grant, um, about matching funds, and and it's very helpful. Do you do you have any emails in your email inbox that have not been opened because we did send it out a couple times? Well, I did get. Uh... The one for July, at least I opened it, so that's why I'm I'm here and uh, very excited. Okay. And since since I since I uh, I'm I'm on, um, I know it says excluding meat and poultry, and I did read that one, and it was when it came to poultry, it was poultry meat, and we my family's in the egg business, so would eggs qualify for this funding? I don't think so because the, um, according to EMS, there are other grant opportunities for poultry and um, livestock. Uh, uh, okay, so okay. Iris, so we'll, we'll check. Though. We'll check because I see where the question's coming from. A lot of times they'll say dairy includes po includes uh, milk and eggs, so we'll get a clearer definition of what dairy means. Okay. And I think we have your email. Uh, yeah. I, I, I did. Yeah, we, we have your email, so we'll send it to you. I appreciate that. And, you know, I did read up on the, the poultry funding uh, opportunities, and it always involved chicken meat, and it didn't, it didn't involve poultry eggs. Good just, point. Just the meat. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No one else? 
Uh, Negus, if you want to raise his hand again. Thank you. Hi. Um, if if you uh, so I was forwarded the email, um, and I guess the the Q and A sheet you're referring to it was an attachment, so that wasn't uh, forwarded along with it. So if if you're taking names, or if you're just going to maybe post it somewhere, we could all get reference to it. I would like to put my name down as as also as a. So we're going to post it on the HDOA website. How's that? Sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay, folks. So the re this recording will be posted on our HDOA website. The link will be, and then will be on YouTube. Um, I, I just, I wanted to mention those of you out there that are familiar with the equipment rules for um, 2 CFR 200.313, which is equipment. Sorry to get technical on you, but there is a provision there that the USDA is looking at which says that anything over $5,000, which this, everything you buy with this minimum 10, maximum 100 is gonna fall in that equipment category. There are provisions there that say after the project is done, the equipment then, because it was purchased with public funds, it goes back to the public. However, there is another line in there that says, or until the project, or until the equipment is no longer needed. So the USDA is looking at that and trying to decide which one of those definitions they'll apply to this. Um, of course, we're hoping that they get us an answer right away before you start preparing your applications, um, which we expect the applications to be sometime in September. Yeah. So um, anyway, keep that in mind. And if you do have a Google, you can Google 2 CFR 200.313 and they give you all the rules on equipment purchase, um, which are which can be pretty you know onerous. You have to insure it, you have to um, protect it, you have to inventory it, on and on. So, but it's still a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment that you can buy. So, please consider. No other questions. Who's any any remarks? No, I'm really excited. Matthew. Thank you for participating in this session. You can close this up. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending today's listening session and submitting your comments for the Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure Program. Um, once again, the recording of this video uh, of this session today will be posted on our HDOA website. Uh, we are still taking public comments through August 11th, hdoa.rfsi at hoi.gov. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.